Hey, I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'm going to show you how to install a Tusk Stage 3 upgrade kit on your Polaris General XP4 1000. The Stage 3 kit is the premium option from Tusk and it's going to come with some of the most popular accessories to help give you a more comfortable ride and some added protection on your machine. So what comes with this kit is the folding glass windshield, the pivot folding mirrors with a pillar mounts, you've got a polycarb rear window, a cargo rack, and the hitch mounted spare tire carrier. Now when you buy all these items in one kit, it's going to help save you some money and all this stuff is straightforward to install, so let's get started. Now over at the machine, we need to prep the windshield mounts and the mirror mounts at the same time. To do that, we need to remove these two A-pillar mounting bolts in the bottom right here. There's two nuts on the back side. We're gonna reuse those, but the easiest way to keep them in place is to shove a rag down behind this A-pillar, and it's just gonna hold those nuts in place while we remove these bolts. And we are gonna reuse the nuts. We're not gonna reuse these bolts. So right here we have our windshield mount and our mirror mount. There's a right and left side for each bracket, so make sure you have them in the same orientation we have these. The windshield bracket's gonna be on top. We'll install one of the new longer bolts with the washer on it through both of the brackets. We'll go through the A-pillar mount and into that nylock nut on the back side that our rag's holding in. Then we're gonna tighten both of these bolts enough that we can still make some adjustments, but make sure it's not too loose. We're gonna use a 17 millimeter socket to do that. And then we'll do the same steps on the other side. Next, we're gonna install the mirror. To do that, we just need to use a 13 millimeter wrench to loosen up this bolt. When you remove it, pay attention to where that star washer is. And all we have to do is go through the back side of the mount with the bolt, install the star washer, and thread the bolt into the mirror. Now these mirrors do have a right and a left side, so just make sure that the logo is, it, is in the correct orientation. And then we're going to do the final tightening once we have all of our brackets adjusted. Then we'll do the same for the other side. To prep the folding glass windshield, what we need to do, we've laid our blanket down, we've set the folding glass windshield face down, and then we need to install the bulb seal onto it. So we have several different sizes that we need to attach, but we're gonna start with the sides and top. So that's gonna be the longest piece of bulb seal, and the actual bulb, that's gonna be facing up when you put this on. Now, as we install this, we're just pressing this on there, if there's any spots where it doesn't fit tight, you can simply pinch this together and it's gonna give you a tighter fit. If you have any extra length on this bulb seal, you can simply cut it off with some side cutters. Now we need to install these shorter pieces of bulb seal. Now this is a 90 degree bulb seal, so you need to make sure that the seal is facing in towards the cab. And these are just gonna go across the bottom on all of these shorter pieces. So we're gonna start with this longer one. It's, this goes right in the middle. And then the two medium pieces, these are gonna go on the wing vents. Then the two shorter pieces on the outsides. Next, we need to assemble the vent brackets. So the first thing we need to do, we're gonna start on the passenger side. And we already have two M6 by 16 millimeter bolts going through that hinge. We're just gonna remove the nuts from the bottom 
Then we're gonna take that right nut plate. There's a right and left side, so how you know it's the correct one is if you stick this on the bottom, this bend, it should be going down and in towards the cab. And we're gonna loosely install the nuts back onto those two bolts. Next, we have the hinge mount. So with this, the triangle side, that's gonna be facing towards the outside of the machine. Set that on there. We've got two more M6 by 16 millimeter bolts. They're gonna come through the front of that vent door through that bracket. And then we have the two nylock nuts that are gonna go on the back side. And all of this hardware is gonna be left loose until we have it all assembled, then we can make some adjustments. Next, we have our hinge lever. So with this lever, you know, if we start down at this pivot, that arc is gonna face or go up towards the top, just like that. Again, we have an M6 by 16 millimeter bolt. We'll go through that hinge bracket, through the hinge lever and install a nylock nut on the back side. After that, we have a hand knob that's gonna go through the hinge lever. We'll install this friction washer on the back side, and then go right into the nut plate with it. And now that we have everything loosely installed, what we wanna do is get everything to where it's almost tight, make your final adjustments, make sure that the vent door opens and closes all the way, and then do the final tightening on all the hardware. And then with this pivot, you're gonna go until you feel some resistance, and then you're gonna back it off about an eighth of a turn, just so it can pivot freely. Then once you finish this side, you wanna repeat the steps for the other side. Next, we're gonna install the windshield wiper. Now, the kit just comes with one wiper and you can run it in three different positions. If you're just running one, typically you'll run it right in the middle, but we are gonna add another wiper later on. So we're actually gonna install this on the driver's side for now. So we have these three plugs in the mounting locations. We're just gonna pop this plug out first. And there's a couple little tabs on the back. If you can't push it out, you can use some pliers to help you do that. And then the mount is actually on the knob. So you're gonna remove the smaller nut from the end. And then this is the mount itself. You'll remove one of these nuts, one of the washers and grommets. And then from the back side, we're gonna install that through the frame of the windshield where we just removed that plug. Then we'll reinstall the grommet washer and the nut. And I'm actually gonna snug these down right now. And I'm just gonna use two 17 millimeter wrenches to do that. They don't have to be crazy tight. We're just putting a little tension on those grommets. The next step is to attach the wiper to the wiper arm. So we need to press on the two tabs on the wiper, open that up. We're gonna take the wiper arm and this is just gonna hook right onto the wiper and then you can press the cover down. So once you've done that, you have your knob, you're gonna go through the back side and just pay attention. So with the knob where it angles down, I'm gonna to try to line that up with the wiper arm. And what we need to do when we install this, there's splines in this wiper arm that line up with that knob handle. So we've lined up our splines. We'll install this smaller nut. 
We're going to use a 10 millimeter socket to tighten it down. I'm just going to snug that up and press the plastic cover down. Then I'm just going to set that out of the way for now. And we're ready to move over to the machine. Next, we need to prep our upper brackets. So to do that, you're going to see two dimples on each side of the stock visor on the front. So those dimples, we already drilled them out using our 3 8 inch drill bit, but you're just gonna drill straight through there. If it's easier for you, you can drill through the backside, but the dimples are gonna be on the front. Now to get the upper mounting brackets installed, we're gonna take the M8 by 20 millimeter bolts with one of the flat washers. We're gonna come through the front of the stock visor both mounting locations and then you're going to take this mounting bracket stick it on the back side or we're going to install the flange nuts on the back next we have a spacer that's going to go on the front side of the bracket we're going to use an m8 by 16 millimeter button head bolt from the back side to hold that in place and just like the other mounts all of this stuff is going to be left loose until the final steps so we can go ahead and do the same steps on the other side. Next, we can set the windshield into place. Once you've done that, you can take the four M8 by 16 millimeter button head bolts. You're gonna go through the front of the windshield, through the mounting bracket, and install the flange nut on the back side. Next, we have the knobs that are gonna go into the spacers on our upper mounting brackets. To get these ready, you just need to install a washer, and then you also have a rubber grommet that's gonna go on there, and then loosely screw these into those spacers. Now, with all this hardware loose, you should be able to adjust the windshield from side to side until it's even and then you wanna get the best optimal fit up and down. So basically what you're looking for up and down, you want there to be a good seal across the bottom of the windshield. Once you have your desired fit, you wanna start by tightening the A-pillar bolts. Then we're gonna tighten both of the bolts on the lower mounting brackets, and then we'll tighten the hardware on the upper mounting brackets. Once you've done all that, you can go ahead and make your final adjustments to the mirrors and tighten them down. The next step is to install our standoff brackets. So there's a right and left hand bracket, but when it's on the machine, it should look just like this with the rubber pad facing towards the rear of the machine. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna take the hand knob that was in the top of the windshield and I'm actually gonna go through the backside of this corner and mount the standoff bracket to the windshield. I'm gonna gently set that down and do the same thing on the other side. Next, we're gonna fold the windshield down and we're gonna be careful not to scratch the hood with these brackets. And once they're resting in the correct spots, we're gonna take a Sharpie and we're gonna mark the three holes, two on the side and one on top for each bracket. From here, you can move the windshield back out of the way. And then what you wanna do is drill the three holes that you just marked. As you can see, we've already done ours, but you're gonna be using a 3 8 inch drill bit to do that 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 hole is gonna be a little bit bigger than the bolt, and that way you have some adjustability. Once the holes are drilled out, you're gonna to wanna to set the windshield back down with the standoff brackets. After that, we're gonna take two of the M6 by 16 millimeter button head bolts. And we've got the nut plate that's gonna go on the inside. Just keep in mind, when you install the nut plate, you've got an angle at the top, and that's gonna go right along the angle of the hood.
we're going to use a four millimeter Allen to loosely screw those button head bolts into the nut plate. Once they're loosely installed, you want to take the remaining button head bolt, go through the top. Then you're going to have the M6 flat washer and the nylock nut on the back side. Then we'll go ahead and do the same steps on the other side. From here, we can make any final adjustments to the brackets and tighten the hardware down. And for these top mounting bolts, use a 10 millimeter socket for the nut on the back side. To get the polycarb rear window and the filler panel ready, we need to apply some foam tape to these pieces. Now there's two rolls of foam tape. You've got the thin stuff and the thicker stuff. The thicker stuff is gonna go on the polycarb rear window, thin stuff on the filler panel. Now with the filler panel, you have two bends. So we have those both facing up right now. And on one of these bends, you've got slots. So we're gonna apply the foam tape to the opposite side, as well as these two edges on the end. So we'll apply the thinner foam tape along the sides. We'll cut it to length. Now we need to flip the filler panel over. And again, we're gonna use that thin foam tape across the bottom right here on this outside edge. Now for the rear window, we're gonna remove the protective film, but before we do that, pay attention. We have this Tusk logo. That is facing up right now. Now we can take the thicker foam tape. We're gonna go all the way around the perimeter of this side that is facing up right now. Just keep in mind, you wanna stay about a 16th to an eighth of an inch away from the edge, and you wanna avoid from covering up these mounting holes. Now we can flip the window over and remove the adhesive backing from the outside. Now over at the machine, we need to remove both of the rear seats. Next, we're gonna set the filler panel into place. We've got the three sides with the foam tape that's gonna seal against the back of this roll cage. And then the side with the five holes that's gonna be facing down. And before I set this into place, you'll notice there's two pre-drilled holes in these gussets. So the reason I mentioned that is we're going to install some of these self-tappers into each of those holes. We're just going to use a T40 Torx bit and our ratchet to tighten that down. And we're going to leave it loose enough we can make some adjustments. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. And then for the middle section, we have the filler panel bracket with the two threaded inserts that's going to go on the inside. And then again, two self tappers are going to go to that. With all the hardware loosely installed, you want to adjust the filler panel for optimal fitment. So I'm going to press down on it to make sure we have a good seal across the bottom. And we'll go ahead and tighten the bolts in the corners first and then the middle. The next step, we need to stuff a rack between the filler panel and the cargo bed. And that way, once we rivet the inside of this filler panel, the cargo bed won't hit the panel when we open and close it. Now we can take the supplied 21 64th inch drill bit and we're gonna drill out this middle hole. Once 
Once you've done that, you wanna install one of these push rivets. And to get this to go all the way in, you're gonna to have to press down so the metal surface is flush with the plastic. Then we can do those same steps for the remaining four holes across the bottom of the filler panel. Next, we can set the rear window into place and we've got the same thing going on here. We've got the self tappers in the upper corners on both sides. So I'm going to loosely install those first and then we can install the remaining brackets. Now for these self tappers, if you're having trouble getting these started, you can either run the self tapper through first and create the threads or have somebody hold the rear window in place while you do that. Next, we need to install the brackets onto the rear window. So the three wider ones, they're gonna go across the bottom. Again, we've got these self tappers. They're gonna go right in there. Then we're gonna finish with the narrow bracket on top. Now that we have everything loosely installed, we're gonna adjust this from top to bottom and side to side to get the best adjustment on it. And then we're gonna lightly tighten down the hardware. If you go too tight, you're gonna damage the rear window. So don't do that, just lightly snug these down. After that, we can reinstall the seats. Next, we have the bed mounted cargo rack. So we need to do some pre-assembly before we set this on the machine. First thing we're gonna do is attach the sides. So this taller end in the front, that's gonna be towards the front of the machine. And then for the sides, we actually have a taper right here and that's gonna go towards the back of the machine. So that's gonna go back and then the bracket is gonna have that L shape. The L is gonna face away from this rack. And then we've got, we're gonna take six of these M8 by 20 millimeter bolts. And we're gonna loosely install these in the three mounting locations. And we'll do the same thing on the right side. Now we need to attach the right and left support gussets. These are different from side to side. So how you tell you have the correct orientation is you'll have the three dots towards the top and then the bottom mounting location that's gonna be slightly more forward than the top mounting location. And again, we're gonna use the M8 by 20 millimeter bolts and loosely install those. Now we're gonna flip the rack upside down. Now we're gonna attach our four spacers in each of the four corners in those mounting locations. So we're gonna take one of these longer bolts, install one of these smaller washers onto it, go through the side, install the spacer. You've got one more washer and then you've got a nylock nut. We can go ahead and tighten these down as we put them on. With the rack prepped, we're ready to go over to the machine. 
Next, we'll bring the cargo rack over to the machine and those plastic spacers, we're gonna make sure that all four of them go into the end slots on the sides of the cargo bed. After that, you're gonna to wanna to tip the cargo bed back. Then we need to remove both plastic panels on each side of the cargo bed. So some of these, they're gonna have this quick clip. You just twist it, pull that out. But on other machines, you might have a screw going in there that's gonna take a T40 Torx bit. So once you have that removed, you can pull out on the side of the plastic and get that out of the way. To attach the cargo rack to the bed, we need to install this fender washer and nylock nut onto the end of this bolt going all the way through our plastic spacer. That's gonna be in all four corners. And this is kind of hard to see, but in the back mounting locations, you're gonna go through this slot. We're just gonna install them by hand for now. Once you've done those same steps for all four mounting locations, you can take your 9 16th inch combo wrench and a quarter inch drive 9 16th inch socket and tighten that nut down. And I do wanna mention when you tighten this hardware down, you don't wanna over tighten it. With all the hardware tight, we can go ahead and reinstall the side panels. After that, you wanna close the cargo bed and the final step is to remove the button head bolts that we previously installed one by one. And what we're gonna do when we take them out is apply some of the supplied Loctite to them and then do the final tightening. Next, at the back of the machine, we're gonna install our hitch-mounted spare tire carrier. We're gonna start by installing the U-shaped insert into the carrier itself. So with the U-shaped insert, I actually bent these tabs out just a little bit to give it a snug fit so I can actually line up the threaded insert with the hole in our carrier. We also have this tab right here that's gonna be facing the same way as that hole. So we'll go ahead and slide that down just keep pressing the threaded insert all the way down until it lines up with the hole in the carrier. Then we're going to slide this into the receiver and install the hitch pin. Now that we've got it lined up, you can install that hitch pin. Now with this, we have the lock washer on it. So we're going to install this. We're actually going to tighten it all the way down. And then we'll put that safety pin in after it's tightened. I'm just going to use a three quarter inch socket to tighten this down. Now to install the strut, we're going to mount to one of the pre-existing holes in the back of the frame under the cargo bed. We're going to use this front hole right here. We're going to use our M8 by 25 millimeter bolt to go through our strut, through that hole. And then we've got that nylock nut on the inside. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Next, we need to swing the strut up into place. And if it doesn't line up perfectly with the hitch, you may have to loosen up that hitch pin mount. That way you can adjust this whole carrier forward or backward wherever you need it until you can line up the strut with the hitch. And then we're gonna take these two larger bolts that came in the kit these should be your M12 bolts. Slide those through and install the nylock nuts on the back. And now that we have all the hardware loosely installed, we can go back through and tighten everything down. So the larger bolts are gonna take a 16 millimeter socket and an 18 millimeter wrench. And we've got a 10 millimeter socket and 13 millimeter wrench 
for this inner hardware, attaching it to the frame. So that's how you install the spare tire carrier. The last step is to adjust the mounting plate to your specific wheel. Now there's so many different options. Each wheel or spare tire is gonna be a little bit different. So how you do that is take your 15 millimeter socket and wrench. You're gonna loosen the four mounting bolts on the mounting plate, adjust that in or out. So you've got about an inch between your tire and the hitch. And that's how you install the Tusk Stage 3 Upgrade Kit on your Polaris General XP4-1000. If you have any questions about the install process, leave those down in the comments below. And if you need one of these kits, maybe you haven't picked one up yet, you can find these on our website. They qualify for free shipping. And if you want to see more helpful content like this, subscribe to our channel. I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Thanks for watching.